Many people battle with the idea that just because they don't have a bruise or a scar or some kind of proof on their body um, that they're not being abused. They believe that without that mark, um, they don't qualify as being abused. They don't have the right to, be, to even say that they're being abused because for them to say that they're being abused means that they are comparing themselves um, to people that have been beaten up, that have bled, that do have bruises. And not only that, they believe that they are faking it, that they are overreacting. So I want to do this video today because recently, as some of you know, there is a new Netflix series. It's called The Maid. Actually, sorry, the, it's called Maid. And it's very interesting because I follow a lot of discussions on Facebook and I've seen that this series has made a lot of people feel either relieved that they're finally they finally feel like they've been heard they finally feel like what they were thinking is suddenly put in front of them in the big screen or they feel triggered they feel depressed they come to some 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 sort of realization that holy hell this is my life so i wanted this video because in this series, aside from giving very good examples of what emotional abuse feels like and all the thoughts that kind of go through our head when we're actually questioning whether we're being abused or not, the other thing with the series is that there are certain instances and certain scenes, which I'm going to mention, that really help pinpoint um, the moments where you actually question whether you're being abused or not. Tactics that the abuser uses to show you that you are being crazy or to convince you that what you're doing is wrong. And also stick with me to the end of this video because not all abusers should be seen as villains. And I know some of you are gonna be like, what are you talking about? Like, how can he not be a villain? Or how can she not be a villain? Look at everything they've done to us. But this series, and I'll explain this at the end, manages at the end to show the human side. And I'm gonna stop there so we can get into the video. Welcome back. If you are new to my channel, welcome to the G spot, AKA the gaslighting spot. This is a safe place where we talk about gaslighting, the thoughts, the emotions, the common experiences that many of us have gone through, even though when we go through them, we think we are alone, which we are not. Um, anything that has to do with emotional abuse in general, and basically just finding some common ground. So, if you have no idea who I am, my name's Olympia, and with my studies in cognitive neuroscience and art history, what I like to do, I like to dissect that pretty little brain of yours to see what makes you tick, but also makes you talk. So if you haven't already, make sure to help a girl out by smashing that subscribe button and ringing that bell for your weekly thirsty videos. And let's start. So ironically, this series starts out much later into what would be an emotionally or even in general abusive relationship. That is, it starts out with the scene where Alex, which is our main protagonist, decides to leave. Now, of course, getting to that point, many people, first of all, don't even manage to get to that point because of various factors, whether it's financial, whether it's that they're trying to keep the family together, or whether it's they just haven't found the strength and the support yet. But this series starts from the time that Alex decides to leave her abuser, which, by the way, his name is Sean. So um, as she's packing up herself, um, he starts texting her and he starts saying things that are very classic gaslighting phrases. Make sure to check out my video above on gaslighting phrases, such as you're overreacting, uh, you're being crazy, what the hell did I do wrong? And he's trying to kind of throw the ball on her in terms of you're the one that's the problem. You're the one that got up and left. Now, a bit of a backstory for those who haven't seen the series. The reason why Alex leaves is because Sean has a drinking problem. And the night before, uh, he punched the wall right next to her. He threw, um, I think it was a vase or a glass at her. So basically shattered glass everywhere. And worst of all, they have a daughter, a three-year-old daughter, her name is Maddie. And Alex says that she had to pick out glass from her daughter's hair. So that was actually what gave Alex the strength to um, move on from this relationship and to move out. Now, that doesn't mean that you should wait until you have a child, but obviously a child is an extra incentive. Now, when she leaves the house, funnily enough, she goes to one of her friends and she asks if she can sleep there. 
Now, this is a perfect example of how much gaslighting and how much emotional abuse Alex has gone through because her life has been in mess so much with her abuser's life, Sean life's, that her friends are his friends. Now, I've been in this situation and um, when she gets there, they, she finds out very quickly that they have informed Sean and that they have told him that she's on her way um, so he can come find her. So she is so alone at that point so that she can't even turn to her best friends because they're the ones that are gonna try and bring her back together with her abuser. By the way, let me know in the comments below if this ever has been the instance for you. Now there are two scenes in this entire series that I believe most of us that have been abused emotionally, sexually, um, not physically, and I'll explain why, uh, really it resonated with us. And that is um, the scene where Alex goes to the social worker because she doesn't have a place to sleep and the social worker tries to convince her to go to a DV shelter, a domestic violence shelter. And Alex looks at her like an alien, thinking, why would I be going to a domestic violence shelter? And the social worker asks her, why didn't you call the police when he started yelling and shouting and throwing stuff at you? Which by the way, I'm sure many of you have also thought of, why would I call the police? Because that person didn't hit me. And Alex responds, um, and tell them what? That he didn't hit me? And then to top it off, and this is one of like, this is for me was the most powerful scene, was that when Alex says to the social worker, I'd hate to take a bed from someone that has been abused for real. And the social worker says, what do you mean abused for real? real? And she answers, well, you know, being hit, being slapped. And then the social worker responds, okay, so then what is fake abuse? Intimidation, control, threats and that's when it really hits Alex that just because she wasn't slapped I mean doesn't mean that she doesn't deserve the help and she even says okay and I'll call the DV shelter and say what and the social worker just says help and that is one of the most difficult things that a lot of people that have been in that situation is to ask for help because, and I'm not demeaning, by the way, in any way, um, physical abuse, but I believe, and you can complete, you can go nuts in the comments below and let me know if the, you think I'm wrong. It is so much easier to turn around and be like, hey, look, I'm being abused. See the bruises, see the cuts, than actually going to someone and trying to explain to them the mental games, the mind game, the mind fuck that goes through your mind because of what the abuser is doing to you. Trying to explain your side of the story, especially if your, um, your, your life is enmeshed with the abuser's life, with their friends. And one way that Sean managed to do that, and here we're talking about abusers in general, is that they take control of your financials, they start to isolate you from your friends because they say stuff like they're bit, they're jealous jealous of us. They just want to break us up. Um, what they're saying is not true. So slowly, slowly, you start taking your life away and becoming enmeshed with the other person's life. And this is what Alex did in the maid. So when she was about to leave, surprise, surprise, and let me know if you've ever been told this. He said to her, "What are you gonna do? I pay the bills." I let you hang out with my friends. I let you hang out with my friends. Um, I feed you, you drink my beer, I let you stay at my home. And suddenly you think that without this person you are helpless, you are completely alone, you are completely dependent on them, and that is exactly what they wanna do for you. That is exactly what their motive is. That is how they keep you. And the second most powerful scene in this series is when uh, Alex is at the DV shelter and she's talking to one of the other women there. And the other woman is trying to explain to her that just because you weren't hit does not mean that you weren't abused. She actually says, before they, before they bite, they bark. Before they hit you, they hit near you. And that moment she shows um, a scar, I mean a strangle scar she has from here. And she said, what do you think that on our first date he said, pass the salt, by the way, I'm gonna strangle you in the future. She says that it grows like mold. 
And that is so true. Emotional abuse takes time, takes patience from the, from the side of the abuser. I've done a lot on how to gaslight and it's all about patience. And it is exactly like growing like mold. You can't take a fresh relationship and make the person think that they're crazy. No, you're gonna have to let that relationship fester, make sure you're taking care of it a bit, and then suddenly the abuser will employ tactics such as, like I say, taking away your financials, taking away, they he took away Alex's car so she couldn't go to work. Um, he took her phone, He actually he stopped paying the bill for her, for her, for her phone so she couldn't communicate with anyone. Now, I know this is a series, but it has been a huge um, debate on Facebook, social media, on whether emotional abuse is considered still abuse. Interestingly enough, Connecticut, but we're not all there yet, but Connecticut um, included uh, psychological abuse, so not really, they don't call it emotional, but they did start um, considering psychological abuse as domestic abuse. So a person that is being psychologically abused in their household now in Connecticut has the same rights in for a person that files for domestic abuse. It falls under the same category. So that means you can get a restraining order, that means you can take the person to court and all the other stuff. But we're not all with Connecticut yet. So I just wanted to include this video on my channel because I believe that it honestly does help a lot with understanding the complex nature of an abusive relationship. So like I said, I promised you guys that in the beginning of this video that I was gonna explain to you how the series manages in the end to show the human side of the abuser. Yes, it could be kind of idyllic because, spoiler alerts, um, Sean does realize that for example, he's not mature enough, doesn't have the patience to take on full custody of his child. But the writers, the writer, the director, everyone wanted to try and create a character, they said, that showed how Sean is just a victim of, a, of an abuse cycle. So Sean himself was abused. He is, um, the, he is the son of an addict mom. He had to grow up faster than other children in order to take care of his mom. So what he's doing still wrong does he get to blame it on his mommy no does he get to blame it on his past no does it make sense though the way he is acting according to his past yes so that is one of the nice things about this series is that they're not they didn't want to create a villain an abuser a person to point at they wanted to show how the cycle of abuse works and they will do that with Sean, who is the actual abuser, but they even do it with Alex and her mom, who, by the way, suffers also from mental um, disorders, um, to show them how they were attracted to abusive people. So Alex's father was abusive to her mom, and then Alex chose an abusive partner. Sure, it shows the cycle of abuse from both the abuser side and the person that is being abused. So this is the video on um, The Maid. If you have watched the series, let me know what you think below. I'm very interested. Um, I personally had dual reaction. My first reaction was like, oh my God, I'm being heard. This is great. But my other reaction was, holy shit, this happened to me. Um, I started crying in some of the scenes. I actually, I bawled, cried. Like, like one of those whimpering, snot everywhere kind of cried because I realized of how many similarities this girl's life had with mine, how many th common thoughts and emotions she were shown on the big screen right in front of me um, when I thought I was the only person thinking about this. So yeah, let me know what you think. If you haven't already, make sure to smash the subscribe button and ring that bell for your weekly Thursday videos. But most importantly, guys, share this video and the series to anyone who you think is questioning whether they're being abused or not. And that's it, folks.